Um, I'm really nervous, so <laughs> I just told my husband I'm really afraid to even walk up there because I'm so nervous. But I think I'm going to start my story by saying before I went to Panama, I wouldn't have been able to walk up here. So that's really um, huge, as the first um, girl was talking about. I was diagnosed in December of 2004, and for the first five years, I was pretty stable. Um, I started with the limp. Um, I, I started with a little bit of fatigue. Everything seemed to be pretty stable. And then in 2000, between 2005 and 2006, I just kind of fell off the cliff. I couldn't walk at all without a cane. I really, uh, my husband and I were talking a lot about the fact that I was having such a hard time getting around in my house. We thought that um, we were starting to look into scooters and that sort of thing, just so that I could get around the house. Um, sorry, I'm, I hate to speak in public. <laughs> uh, yes, I have MS. That's a great place to start. Um, <laughs> I have MS, and that's what I was diagnosed with and nervousness. <laughs> my, um, the one thing that I've just always loved in my life is my horse. He's my passion. And the, the part about MS that bothered me the most is I was starting to have such a difficult time. Just having, I, I was getting so fatigued, especially, as I said, 2005, 2006. I was really losing the interest in even going out to ride because I needed a couple people to help me get on my horse. I needed somebody to help me tack my horse up. And just for those of you that have experienced the fatigue with MS, you, you really know you're tired when you start to make excuses and, con and convince yourself that you don't even want to do it anymore. And I knew that that's not the way I felt, but it was just easier to justify that I didn't want to do it, other than to accept the fact that I couldn't do it. So like David Oliver, I had actually met David. He was from the same community that I was from. And I met him through one of my friends that I ride horses with. He is somehow related to her through marriage or something. And so Elaine introduced me to David. And this is before either one of us knew about the stem cell therapy. About a year after meeting David, I ran across, somebody told me about Holly Huber, who had at one time lived in our community as well. And I started following her story on the internet. And I kind of didn't think too much about it at first. And then the next thing I know, David went to Costa Rica. And now, of course, I'm starting to get a lot worse. So I looked into it, and I researched it for about nine months. and. Finally, in the end, my husband was really skeptical. Uh, but finally, we made our decision based on the fact that we ruled out, through the research that I had done, I ruled out that the uh, procedure would be dangerous. I knew that it was safe. So we kind of went into it with the idea that it was a crapshoot. And because it wasn't going to be dangerous, we figured we were going to take that risk. Uh, you know, just a financial loss would be the only loss that um, I might experience. So um, I went to Panama for the 30-day treatment. And like David, I was on a provigil for energy before I went to Panama. I couldn't even get out of bed until I took my pill. And then I was only good for a couple of hours. But um, I discontinued taking that when I left to go to Panama. I've never taken it since. And uh, about a week into the treatment, I started to notice, like David, that I was not experiencing the same fatigue. I mean, I, I, even going through all of the treatments, just the fact that I could function without being on per vigil was a really big thing. So when we got back from Panama, I wasn't using my cane around the house. and. Within a couple of weeks of being home, I was only using the cane if I went somewhere totally unfamiliar. I wasn't using it at the barn anymore. I was now able to tack up my horse and ride him by myself. I mean, obviously, I still have MS. My balance is still 
bad, but it's a lot better. The fatigue and the balance, the fatigue was improved by 100%. My balance was improved, but not as much as the fatigue. So the um, biggest thing to me was just the fact that I have a life now. You know, the quality of my life is so much better. I can really participate in anything I want to, not necessarily to the extent. You know, I can't ride my horse as long as my friends can ride their horses, and I still have to kind of plan my schedule, but I don't have to spend my day sleeping, and, and just I just think it's pretty, it's really a great thing that I can even ride my horse. So my husband does say, though, he reminded me before I came up here to tell you guys I still can't cook. So <laughs> it, it didn't help with that. But, <laughs> but other than that, he's a real believer. And that's, that's really a big statement because everybody knew how skeptical he was when we went, when we left for Panama. And now he tells everybody how much it helped me and how much we have our life back. So I just want to thank you guys. Thanks a lot.